just be what they need to be at this time. Um, and adults, if you need to make noise, you make noise as well. I can see some talking over there already. Um, but we want you to feel welcome. We don't want you to feel like you have to be restricted or anything like that. So you are welcome here today. Now, the way that we're going to run this service is in a moment we're going to sing together. Uh, you may know the words, you may not know the words. Um, sing along if you do, or look at the words and just reflect on those as well. Because to be honest, most of the songs that have been chosen today have been chosen by Amy and Ollie. Um, they said, can we have these songs? And um, for those who know Amy, I very rarely can say no to Amy because virtually she acts like my boss half the time. Um, even though technically I'm her boss, but there we are. Um, no, you're my boss, are you? I mean, someone's my boss somewhere. But uh, a lot of the songs that Amy and Ollie have picked today, so they speak something powerfully into what this is all about today. After that, we'll have the dedication, and after that, children and young people go down. We've got groups downstairs. Um, they are run by people who are safeguard trained and level two, and the ratios are all worked out, so you are very welcome. And if you would be more comfortable staying down there with them, um, please just have that discussion with the group leader. But you are welcome, is what I'm saying. And for those who are regular worshippers here as well, you are welcome as well, because we are part of the family that Ollie and Amy are saying that they want to help journey as they uh, commit and dedicate their children to God. I'm going to pray and I'm going to invite Tim Squires, who's leading the band this morning, to come up and to uh, lead us in sung worship. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the gift of children, of family, for the gift of those who are older in years with wisdom, for the gift of those who are busy working, for the gift of those who are retired or not working. Lord, we thank you for the gift of every single person in this room. And we pray today that as we worship, as we praise, as we say words, as we use silence, that you might speak powerfully to us. So this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite Tim to come up with the band. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. And um, what a beautiful day for a dedication. So we've got three songs to sing. Um, as Tim said, if you know the words and you, you know, know the tunes, great. If you don't, don't worry. If you want to join in and you, you mess up, you know, it's only harmony at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, just feel free to sing or not and be blessed by the words this morning, whatever. So we're going to stand if you're able and we're going to sing these songs together. <laughs> Christ in me, Christ. 
Christ in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. for you I long for more where you lead me I will go I raise my voice and look in your eyes your glory God Sing, 
Grace like a river, currents of love, mercy and justice flow through your Son, Father of light, Father to all. I'm overwhelmed by your majesty. A lot of us think we're unworthy, we're not good enough. As I said last week, um, there's a lot of people with mental health issues and struggles. And sometimes we can think, who are we that God would ever love us? But it's amazing that he does. And this song just starts with, who am I that the highest king would welcome me? But the fact is, he does want to welcome all of us. And for us to be part of his family as children of God, and that's what this last song is all about. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free. Slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my fall. chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Sunset. 
Please take a seat. So I'm going to invite Amy, Ollie, Nala, Eliza and Ezekiel to come up in a moment after they put some more chairs out and uh, to come and share. Tim, so I'm told Tim, Tim, I'm going to use this one today to so. Go. We're a little bit worried how what's going to happen when Zeke and Eliza come over to me, but we'll play it by ear. <laughs> Hello, Nyla. Who's got with you? Zebby. That's good. Deborah. Fantastic. <sighs> Brilliant. Now, as you look out, there's probably a lot of people from random places that are here today. Um, but they're all here to support you as a family. And I want you to know as a family that you are loved by this church and by the people who are um, out there as well. I need you to know that you are a loved uh, family and we are so grateful for who you are and for what you do in the life of this church. And today we're going to give thanks specifically for Ezekiel and Eliza, and they're going to go for a little wonder anyway, so that's fine. Um, but we've all got some things we're going to say. Now I'm going to say some word. Zeke's had enough. He's like, that's me, done, thank you very much, I'm off. He heard you were speaking. Yeah, all right, Ollie, thank you very much. <laughs> he's what, Nala? He's going to do colouring in, that's fine, because we know he's there, so that's fine. <laughs> well, this is going well, isn't it? So, <laughs> so I'm going to say some words. In the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome Ollie, Amy, and Nala, who come to give thanks with us for the gift of Eliza and Ezekiel, even though they're not quite here. Um, Jesus was presented by his parents in the temple. In turn, he took young children in his arms and he blessed them, celebrating the gift of life and the faithfulness of God. We covenant together as parents and as a church, making promises before God for the sake of these children. And here we share the joy and the gift of Ezekiel and Eliza and praise God for the giver of all life. We celebrate family life, acknowledging that children are not the property of parents, but named before God. They are persons with whose welfare and nurture we are entrusted. Concerned about the dangerous world and the wonderful world, in which they are born into, and honestly aware of the sinfulness which will soon mar their lives, we here pray and trust that God will protect them. Together we celebrate the importance of community and truth that parents and children need not be alone. Here we confess and proclaim that our hope rests in Jesus Christ, and the best we want for our children is that they become true disciples, of the one and only Lord and Saviour. Scripture calls us to see in children a sign of the kingdom of God, that they are a living sign that God welcomes us without condition and loved and grace on all who come with him with empty hands and open hearts. Those are words that have been written, but words from the Bible in Mark 10, where it says that people were bringing the little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to those people. He said, no, go away. Jesus is too busy. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me and stomp around. Do not stop them. For such as these is the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, who does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask some questions of you all. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to hand you a microphone, and you can answer those questions. Let's pray. Lord God, creator of all things, giver of life, we praise you. You are the loving parent of each person. And joyfully, we thank you now, with drums in a moment, potentially, for the gift of new life, and the birth of these children, for all that you have given and will give to us through them, 
and for the possibilities of their new life. We thank you for the love which has beckoned them into existence, for the love and hope which they have awakened, and for the care which surrounds them, we give you our thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I kind of decided this is a comment on my drumming, thinking I uh, will show you how it's done. See, can I see you going to come over here? That's it. Fantastic. Look at that. Brilliant. Okay. I'm going to give you both. I'll give Ollie a microphone because Amy's voice is loud enough. Um. Okay. Amy and Ollie. Do you thank God for the gift of your children? And do you accept the joys and duties, the wonders and the frustration sometimes of parenthood? Gladly we do. Do you promise to bring your daughter and son up within the Christian community? And by God's grace, so to live that they will be nurtured by Christian love and surrounded by the life of Jesus? As disciples of Jesus, we do. Right, Nala, this is where I'm going to ask you a question. Is that okay? So, Nala, I've already done this, but to Nala, are you going to help Mummy and Daddy to help bring up Zeke oh, and Eliza? She's all right. Are you going to help make sure <laughs> oh, that they're okay and are you going to play with them, have fun with them, and help them in all they do? Yes. Fantastic. That's brilliant. No, she's gone. That's it. <laughs> I mean, we know this wasn't going to be straightforward and simple, yeah, was it? No, we knew that. So, so I'm going to ask you what uh, what names you have given your son and daughter. Eliza and Ezekiel. Eliza and Ezekiel. This is where I meant to get them. It's Eliza, you going to come with me? Right, is Zeke? Okay, Ben is still there. Go find Zeke. Zeke, Zeke, you going to come? Yay! Come on, he's running to me, he's running to me. Come on, Zeke. Right. Here we go. Fantastic. I've got him, I've got him. That's fine. Here we go. Here's a photo, Eliza and Zeke. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome you into the community of God's people. May God bless you. May God keep you, and may God make his face to shine upon you. I'm going to ask the congregation, gathered here as members of this congregation, and as representatives of the wider church and family and friends of God, do you promise to offer Eliza and Ezekiel and their family your love and support, and being faithful in prayer, will you share with them by word and example? And if you promise that, and if you are able would you please stand? I'm going to invite the band to come up. We're going to sing a blessing song over Eliza Ezekiel. I'm going to walk down the church with them, and there's going to be some words on the screen. This could be fun. I think I've done all right so far, haven't I, both? Yeah? Cool. Excellent. But we're going to sing this song now as a blessing over them both, uh, that the Lord will bless them and keep them. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine on you. The Lord be gracious to you. Turn to you.
please take a seat. And I'm just going to wander again, because I want to show you some of these wonderful people in a moment. We're going to get the godparents to stand up in a moment, and they're going to say a prayer. But I want you to see some of these wonderful people here that have promised today to help you to live a life that know that you will know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. But they'll help guide you in some of the difficult times. Look, there's Ezra over there, your friend who's going to grow up with you. That's going to be amazing, isn't it? And you're going to have a good friend. And there's, there's Dougie, who you're going to have to look after because Dougie's younger than you. <laughs> there's people here, and Katie has got a new baby coming, so actually very soon you'll have someone else to help look after. But all these people, it's not just the young people, it's the people who are slightly older as well, because they've promised as well. They've got a lot of wisdom, and you need to listen to them. Don't listen to Mike South, though. <laughs> but apart from Mike South, no, <laughs> listen to them. You've got friends and family here today as well that have come again to say they're going to love you and help you and show you some wonderful things. Sometimes babysit so that mum and dad can have a night alone. Sometimes they're going to give you some advice. Do you know, there might be a time when mum and dad, you don't want to listen to what they're going to say. And actually, these are some of the people you're going to help guide you. There's Jess that you know from Christ. So we have said this morning that we're going to promise to be a village together really and help raise you and help share that responsibility I'm going to hand you back to mum and dad now because my arms are absolutely <laughs> killing me <sighs> <sighs> I'm going to pray and then I'm going to ask we've got some godparents here as well haven't we and I'm going to ask them a promise in a moment but let me say a prayer and I know that one of the godparents is going to come and pray in a moment loving God we pray for these children and their family. We pray that they might know the challenge and comfort of your love and see its power. Take all we offer to them, our care, wisdom, and our mistakes, and through them reveal yourself. Take the experiences to which they will have and through them speak your gracious word. As they grow in body, mind, spirit, feed and guide them by your spirit, and bring them safe through childhood and youth, and lead them to make the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. Through Christ your Son, our Saviour. Amen. So I'm going to ask if you've been asked to be a godparent, if you would just stand where you are, if that's uh, possible. Or you're all in one place, that's really fantastic. So I'm going to ask you a promise as well. We as a community have offered our support and love. But we know Amy and Ollie have asked you specifically to walk with these children and to show them love and to help nurture and to help them see them grow and to be there when mum and dad are the last people they want to speak to, but you will be the people they run to. Do you accept that responsibility to nurture these children? Brilliant. There we are. We haven't practiced that, so that's great. Take a seat. And I think Katie's going to come. It was someone's going to... No? Both sets, Both sets are coming to pray. As you can see, this is very well organised. <laughs> um, do we know what's happening now? They're going to pray. Are they going to pray? They're going to pray. They were informed of this. Pete's going to pray. You don't have to pray. pray. Go on, Pete. You pray, mate. Yeah. Pray. Father, Lord, we just thank you for the blessing of Ezekiel and Eliza. We just ask you just to be with them on their journey through their fellowship, Lord. We ask you just to be with the whole family unit, Ollie, Amy, and Nala also. We just thank you for the love and support you have for us all, and we ask you for that to continue. Amen. Amen. Father God, we um, praise you and thank you for these uh, amazing blessings that you've given to Amy and Ollie, for Nala, for Eliza, and Ezekiel. And Lord, we just pray. Um, particularly say for Eliza and Ezekiel, Lord Jesus, that they become warriors for you, prayer warriors and life warriors for you, Lord Jesus, that they know that your will for them is to know you and to love you. And I pray, Lord, they will do that completely unapologetically and wholeheartedly for you, Lord Jesus. So we bring them to you and just pray, Lord, that they will know you love them, that you will provide for them, and that they will be your blessing to the world. In your name, amen. Amen.
Uh, Father, I was just struck as I came in, the first slide I saw was welcome to the family, so we're welcoming them to the big family of God. Um, and Father, we sang in that song as well, I am a child of God, and everyone that knows Ollie knows that despite his age, he's still a child. Father, we're all children, <laughs> we're all children of God, um, and I pray that we don't forget that as we watch um, Eliza and Ezekiel grow up, that we remember the childhood that we had ourselves, that the children that we are inside, that the children we are still loved by you, our Father in heaven. May you bless them, may you keep them well, and may they be well looked after by everyone here and beyond. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You can go and sit down now. And I've been past a lovely little drawing while I was going off, so thank you very much for that. So before the children and young people go down, what we do as a church is we, we have a bit of family news, um, just to say that there's birthdays or things going on. So this week, just say happy birthday to Simon, to Neil, and to... Um, Rodney, Rodney, I knew your, mate, your name went, I've written it down, Rodney as well, and that's tomorrow, so happy birthday from all of us. Any other, na- any other family news or anything going on at all? Want to celebrate? No, fantastic, sorry Rodney about forgetting your name completely. Um, so, um, basically now the children young people are going down their groups, now before we do that, if, so that you know, if you've got a child who's under school age, we've got a creche down, who's doing creche today? So Joy and Vicky, so they're going to go down, that's downstairs, uh, Hedana. If you've got a child in years reception to year five, uh, that'll be of Elise, I think. Is Elise there? Elise is at the back there. So you follow Elise down. And if you've got a child who is year six and above, the normally Amy would do a wonderful session, but we've got Michelle down here. Uh, who's my wife, so it's okay, I can do this. Um, she's going to be taking the youth down. That's up to the age of about 14, 15, 16. So we will see you a little bit later on. So for those who are visiting, over this last year we've been looking at the New Testament together in a year. Uh, We've been doing the whole lot in a year. And so uh, today's reading will be 2 Timothy 3. And uh, those are the readings for those that want to carry on doing the reading this week. Now I know the person who's reading is not here today, so I don't think Amy got anyone else. Is anyone expecting to do the reading? No, good, I would do the reading then. Here we go, so the reading this morning is 2 Timothy 3, and it says this. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of of God. It does get better, just so you know as it goes on. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. Have nothing to do with them. They are the kind who worm their way into the homes and gain control over the weak-willed women who are loaded down with the sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these men opposed the truth. Men of depraved minds, who as far as the faith is concerned are rejected, but they will not get very far, because as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. You, however, know all about my teaching, the way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Economium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, 
everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and become convinced and become convinced of because you know those from whom you have learnt it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed, and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the men of God, the man of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Not a great start in that passage, really. <laughs> and as I say, we're going through the Bible in a year, and this was the passage that led today. And I talked with Amy about it. We thought it was fine, because actually, we've got to be honest, there are a lot of troubles sometimes in this world, lots of things that try and pull us off centre. But that ending is so important, that everything in Scripture, everything that God breathed the life of Christ is there to help us. Now, when I was at school, which seems like many years ago, we always used to sing every morning. I'm grateful that some of the, church, uh, some of the schools around this area still sing. But one of the sing songs we used to sing every single day was One More Step Along the World I Go. And you know, the song in itself is all right, but I get kind of almost regressions every time that's sung now. I go back and go, oh, it just does something to me. And it seemed to be that we like to sing songs about a journey because the other song we used to sing was the journey of life may be easy, may be hard, there be dangers on the way. Do you remember that one? Um, it's a song that kind of epitomizes what Paul is saying to Timothy in this reading today because it's written by Paul to uh, uh, Timothy a kind of protege of Paul's. And he's saying, do you know what, Timothy? The journey of life is not going to be easy. There's going to be lots of challenges and difficulties on the way. Now, Paul being Paul goes to lay out some of those challenges rather than just leaving it there, giving us a long list of all the challenges that Timothy may face. And then he gives us a long list of all the things that help us. But it starts out warning of the challenges. And do you know what? These challenges in life are set to drag us away from God. All the things that I read at the beginning, which to be honest are quite difficult to read, because you sit there going, oh, do I really want to be reading these things? Because actually they're quite oppressive and they're quite sad. But it's important we know them, because they are the things that will drag us away from a relationship with God. They are the things that as Zeke and Eliza grow up, have the potential to drag them away from a relationship with God. And maybe for us, we might be sat here today, knowing that we have been dragged away from a relationship with God. You might have excuse. There might be reasons. They might be valid reasons, good reasons. But actually what God, what Timothy is wanting to know in this passage and what Paul is saying to him is that in this journey, yes, there may be difficulty. But if you have God with you, then we can face anything. And that's our prayer for Zeke and Eliza today. We can't stand here and say that life is going to be easy for them. But in the challenges that they face, we pray that they will know the love of God that journeys with them. And Paul's writing to Timothy today ends with hope, doesn't it? It ends with saying all the things that we need, all the things that help us to nurture and to foster that relationship with God. At the end of this passage today, it says that all scripture, the living word of God, is there to help us to be a servant of the living God. 
And you can see one sense when Amy and I sat down and looked at this passage and thought, is this appropriate? Yes. Yes, it's highly appropriate for today. Because for Zeke and Eliza, like I say, there will be things that they find difficult. Things that will want to drag them away. But actually, what our responsibility as friends, as family, as godparents, as church, is to show them God. It's to show them Christ. It's to show them that even in the difficult, challenging times, there is a God who loves them so much that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for them. This is what we've promised today. This is what Amy and Ollie have promised today as well in their parenting of them. And it's great joy because I know that every word that Amy and Ollie said today were true promises. Not just to stand before you and make things look good. They will live them out. They will live them out as children themselves, children of the living God. One of them more of a child than the other, but, you know, we've already said that this evening. <laughs> you know, we have promised today, us, all of us, to be that village you know the saying that says it takes a village to raise a child? We have promised to be that village. All of us. That's a responsibility, isn't it? A responsibility that says when these children grow up, we will be the ones that will be there for them. Maybe some from afar. Maybe some closer. Maybe some of you, by the time they grow up, and probably be me, will be perhaps a, a memory of some distant person or someone who looks from afar. But can I encourage you to pray for them? Even if you haven't got that day-to-day -day contact, pray for them. Pray for Amy and Ollie, pray for Nala, pray for Ezekiel and Eliza, add it to your list of people to pray for. Because we have the promise, we have promised to show them God. And today I always get excited at these dedications because what we see is two lives who have the potential to be anything they want. They could be an astronaut. They could be a basketball player with the height of their dad. <laughs> Ollie, I love you. You know I love you, man. They could be a minister, they could be an archaeologist, they could be a cleaner, they could be a teacher, they could be an office worker. The potential in them is unlimited. Isn't it amazing as we get older that potential seems to narrow in some way? Or as a matter of my own boys now, Joe at the age of 14 has taken his options and by taking his options he's narrowed some of his career paths. But here at this moment, Zeke and Eliza could be anything they want to be. And our prayer, first and foremost, is that they are children of the living God. Our prayer is that they have a relationship with their Lord and Saviour. But our job is, as they go through that, to help them become the people that God is calling to be. And what that means is we need to help them help them traverse life. And it's the same for us, isn't it? We need to know the challenges and difficulties that lay before us sometimes. We know the things that drag us away from our relationship with God. We know the barriers that have been in the past and the walls that we've built. And maybe today is a day when we have to come back and say, God, I'm sorry for the distance I've put between you and myself. All scripture. Jesus, the living word, is there to equip us. To be the people that God has called us to be. Fully and holy. Not just partial, but fully. Fully. And I know some of you who sat here today won't quite see it like that, and that's fine. 
But I want you to know it's not dependent on what you feel. I believe wholeheartedly that God loves you where you are now. Not after you've made some word commitment. Not after you've had ten stamps of coming to church for a few weeks. Not after you've been to church for years. Where you are now, God loves you. And where you are now, God wants a relationship with you. And where you are now, God wants to nurture and journey with you. Like this church would journey and nurture with Eliza and Zeke. So what does that mean for each one of us today? Are we willing to make that step which enters a community and to see God at work in our lives? Transforming and shaping something more than we could ever possibly imagine. The Christian faith doesn't give you all the the sense of It doesn't make everything right in your life. But it means when things go wrong, you have God and Saviour journeying with you. It doesn't mean that when you give your life to Christ, everything becomes super wonderful and easy. You're friends with Amy and Ollie. We know some of the difficulty that has been in the journey of Eliza and Zeke coming into this world doesn't make life easy but it means that you have a family by your side but it means most of all that you have a Lord and Saviour who journeys with you I want to end not by singing do not worry but by reading the words of the song I started with the journey of life you may not know it but it says this the journey of life may be easy may be hard Sam, you can sing it if you want. There'll be danger on the way. But with Christ at my side, I'll do battle as I ride against the foe that would lead me astray. Will you ride, ride, ride with the King of Kings? Will you follow my leader true? Will you shout Hosanna to the lowly Son of God who died for me and for you? And I think today, that song sums up this reading what we're doing today, and everything. May today you hear the call of God that wants to journey with you through the good times and the hard times. When you feel close to God and when you feel far from God. This is the call of the one that we have promised today. To, and we know will journey with Zeke and Eliza through their life. May we each know that journey and that same Lord in our lives. Amen. Sue's going to come and bring us our prayers today. Shall we pray? We're going to begin our prayers this morning by lifting two of our brothers and sisters to the Lord uh, who are going through a very difficult time at the moment, and that is Marlene, and that is also Norman Jackson. So can we pray for them? Father God, we begin our prayers this morning by lifting up our brothers and sisters, Marlene and Mike, Norman and Pat to you. Lord, we know that all of them are going through difficult times, but we just pray, Father God, that as Marlene nears the end of her journey on this life, but looks forward to the life to come, that you, Lord God, will be with her that she may know your assurance, your comfort, your peace, and may she know that underneath and round about are the everlasting arms. And above all, may she know the hope that is her calling. And for Norman, we pray, Lord, that you will be with him in Derryford Hospital after having a fall and is very frail. We pray for him too. We lift him up before you, Lord, and we just pray a blessing on him. May he know your presence and feel the touch of your hand on his life. And for Mike and for Pat and for their families, we pray for peace. 
Father God, we also are so privileged that we can pray for those that have asked us to pray from the prayer station yesterday. And Peter has asked for prayer this morning as he has so many things to sort out after his wife's death. And we just lift him up before you. We pray, Father God, that he will sense your presence with him because we have prayed for him as a church, that in his grief he may find your peace and that, Lord, you will be with him in the practicalities of the things that he has to do and as he has to complete the end of his journey on his own. Father God, we lift him up before you. And we pray for our sister Mary, who's having her knee operation on, on Tuesday. We pray that you will give her peace and we just pray that it will be successful and that, Lord, you will heal that knee and heal her, we pray, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that our reading this morning says that all scripture is God-breathed. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word, the Bible. We thank you that as we read it, we find all that we need to live the life of fullness that you intend for us. We thank you that it guides us encourages us, lifts us and gives us hope and strength. Your word lights our paths and gives us wisdom and increases our faith. It also reminds us that you alone are sovereign over all nations and that you rule over all kingdoms and you have placed us here in our nation to pray for our country. Lord, over the years, we have turned our backs on our Judo-Christian roots. Father God, we pray that once again, you will be glorified in this nation. Lord, we pray that you will pour out your spirit upon our land, that you will forgive us for our sins, and that you will give us wisdom, courage, and strength to navigate the challenges before us that we may once again be a nation that honours you and reflects you in the world around us. Give our Christian MPs courage to stand firm on your word, the Bible, to speak truth and to be unwavering in their pursuit of what is right and what is good. We pray for our children and our young people, so often bombarded with so many different lifestyles and pressures in these days. We pray that they will have peace in the Lord and that they would be set free from anxiety, stress, depression, and suicide in Jesus' name. We pray for our youth for boldness, courage, strength, and wisdom, for them to share their faith in their school, uni, and college, and their workplace. And we pray for those that would turn their backs on you, for a new spiritual awakening, for restoration of relationships, and a knowledge of your unfailing love for you. Father God, we pray a blessing on all the children downstairs, from the creche to the youth, that each person will grow in the love and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, and they will be rooted and grounded in him. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So yes, just a reminder, I forgot to, we normally have some questions that happen after the sermon. I forgot those this morning. Um, so just things to think about this week is do we step away from God when things get hard? What today is maybe a step you need to take in your faith? What are you dedicated to? And how are we equipped for every good work that God wants to do through us? things to think about this week but we've got some notices this week this week is our light party on the 31st of october 4 to 6 p.m if you want to come along to that uh, or want more information please speak to katie and elise elise is downstairs um, uh, sign up on church suite or through uh, just speaking to them that'd be great that's this this friday i think is it friday thursday okay thursday fine um We've also got the shoe boxes that are coming out. Again, a lot of people asked for shoe boxes last week, so um, we do Operation Christmas, uh, Samaritan's First Operation Christmas Child. Uh, there are leaflets like this out in the foyer area. 
so please do pick up a leaflet, it gives you more information. If you want a box or you want to know more, Julie, who's at the front here, if you don't know who Julie is, come and find me and I'll let you know who Julie is. Uh, on Monday, tomorrow, it's the prayer and the life of the church. So this is a, a meeting that we'll have to talk about how prayer fits together in the life of the church. That, I've done that wrong again, it's 7.30, isn't it? Is it 7.30? I think it's 7.30. Look at church suite. Um, I will find out in a moment what time it is, but I think I've done that wrong. It's 7.30. Um, Monday here. It would be really good if those who are part of the church could come and be part of that as we talk. Pardon? Thanks, Amy. 7.30. So ignore that. Just imagine the 30 was put on the end there. Um, that's what. And then finally, we've got uh, the planning meeting on November the 4th at 6 p.m. for our interactive Christmas journey. We are closing down the building for a week and setting up an interactive Christmas um, journey. We've already had some of the schools sign up to come and go through the Christmas story um, with that. So please do, if you're able to help, come and be part of that. There is one other notice that's not on the screen. Um, someone, uh, Stephanie is coming next week to talk about this. You wait for this, you probably thought you're never going to hear this as a notice before. But Stephanie is starting up a new group in the church for four weeks called Psalms and Stretches. So it's movement meditation over psalms and gentle stretches. So there you are. That's something I never thought I'd be advertising in the church before. Um, she's going to come next week and talk a little bit more about it. It's a four-week program for £25, or you can donate what you can. Um, but it's basically um, kind of movement meditation over psalms and gentle stretches. I'm busy that time, I'm really afraid, so, you know. <laughs> and the leotard just doesn't fit anymore. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm going to invite Tim to come up, and in, on that note, and uh, lead us in our final song this morning. Please do stay for tea and coffee afterwards, um, but I will hand over to Tim. Now. Don't make any comments. <laughs> yes, no comment. <laughs> um, yeah, let's stand and sing our final song. It's called Waymaker. Just reminds us that God is here um, and we worship Him, and He's done so much for us, and uh, just reminds us who He is and what He can do for us. So let's stand and sing. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are here. darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every
a promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. You're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. people down the front to pray with you if you want to be prayed for after something's come up please if you feel something's on your mind you want to talk it through don't leave before talking to someone or praying with someone please do stay uh, for tea and coffee and please do pick up your children from downstairs as well if they are downstairs but may the blessing of God Father Son and Holy Spirit be with us all evermore Amen <laughs>